Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, today, we will start off with creation of uh, a PVS Master Gold image. I have already uh, created the base Windows Server 2019 PVS Gold image where I've got uh, the uh, VDA already installed, which is 2402. Uh, we'll be going ahead and installing the target device for PVS and then we will normally be capturing the entire VM onto our PVS server. So just so that you guys are aware, just wanted to show you, I've just literally um, installed the basic apps like the Office 365. I've also got the VDA 2402 installed and I have got FS logics for my profiling solution. Uh, which I'll be using and I've got the generic BISF which is a ceiling script which we'll normally be using later on. So well, firstly let's go and install the, the uh, Citrix VEM agent uh, followed by the Citrix PVS target device. So let's start off with the, the uh, VEM agent. I've already pre-downloaded all of the uh, uh, apps uh, in here so let's start off with start off with the agent. I'll agree the terms and I'll click on install. Click next. Next, uh, I've got my uh, VIM agent on premise, so I'll click the option of on premise deployment. Click next. Uh, in the infrastructure service, I'll just give in the uh, VIM agent load balancer FQDN. And I'll click next. Uh, in the cache location, uh, as this is going to be <clears throat> uh, a PVS, uh, so PVS gold image, uh, anything that's not writable on the cache, we need to make sure like the paging file, the event logs are all being diverted to a different drive. Uh, uh, so I'm just going to browse to the D drive where I've got the right cache enabled and I created a VEM cache folder already in there. So I just click on, click on that and click next. And I'll go ahead and click install. This shouldn't take that long and hopefully uh, this should complete the installation of the VEM agent on the master image. Once this is completed, we'll start off with uh, the PVS target device installation. So as you can see, uh, the agent is installed successfully. I'll go ahead and click finish and close the wizard. I've already downloaded the PVS 2402 LTSR, so I'll just mount that. And I'll click on target device installation and click on target device installation. And hopefully, hopefully that should bring up a and as you can see the wizard has just started uh, I'll just click on next I'll accept the licensing term click on next leave that as default next install this shouldn't take that long and hopefully this should normally get installed successfully <laughs> So the next step is, uh, as you can see, that the agent is installed as well. So we will normally uh, go ahead and click finish and give this device a restart once. Once the VM is restarted, we'll log in back again and capture the image using the image wizard utility. At this point, I'll normally uh, go ahead and start up the imaging wizard and once the wizard has opened up i'll go ahead and click next i'll connect to the pv to my existing pvs server and i'll go ahead and click next so at this point we'll be creating a new v disk uh, we'll be taking an entire snapshot of the uh, vm itself go and click next I'll provide the target device name, uh, the one that we are normally capturing. So I'll call it CVAD Master PBS. 
and I'll keep the network connection and my collection name default as it is. Click on next. I'll give I'll give the VDisk a proper name as this is a Windows Server 2019. I'll just give it the same name. I'll I'll make sure that it's picked up the right store on my PVS uh, uh, on my PVS server and uh, the VDisk type. I'll make sure that I keep it to dynamic. You can keep it fixed as well, but I prefer to normally keep it to dynamic. And the type would normally be VSDX. And I'll go ahead and click next. Uh, in my case, I'm using Mac as my licensing module, so I'll just click on Mac and go ahead and click Next. And I'll click the first option where it says Image Entire Boot Disk. Click Next. I'll go ahead and optimize the hard drive again, and I'll make sure that all of this has been ticked. And click Next. And I'll go ahead and click on Create. So as you can only see, I just want to quickly show you what has happened in the backend. I'll just quickly log on to one of the PVS boxes. And in the console, if I refresh my console, you can see there's a new VDIS that has just got created by the name Windows Server 2019. And also in the collection, uh, you can see that the new target device that we just got created has been created with the MAC address to, uh, to that specific VDISC itself. I should also be able to see the contents of the VDisk. So if I click on my D store, uh, these are the three files. So I have the VSDX file, the PV PVP file, and the log file for that specific uh, VDisk itself. Now let's go back onto the PVS server and I'll go ahead and click continue. I do not want to start it because I want to change the boot order of the PVS. I want to make sure that it is changed from hard disk to network. So I want to make sure that it boots out of network uh, from Pixie and then it uh, captures the entire image. So I'll just click on no. And hopefully that should normally shut down this machine. And in the meanwhile, as it is shutting down, I'll go to properties of the VM and I'll change the boot order of it and make sure that I select network and put that as a top priority. Okay, then. So hopefully, <clears throat> once this is uh, powered up, powered down, I'll switch it on back and it should boot out from the network. So as you can see, it's shut down. I'm just going to go ahead and power it on. And what should I normally see is I should be able to see that this specific VM is trying to boot out from PXE, which is my network. If all goes well, I should be able to see the desk where you go. It looks, looks right. So once it's logged in, the entire image process should start off. So you can see that it's booting out from the PVS uh, and it's picking picked up the right VSDX as well. I'll log into the VM. And hopefully once I log in, the image uh, capture process should automatically start off. So as you can see, it's discovering the volume. And once the volume has been discovered and the partitions has been discovered, the next step is it will normally copy the entire image, uh, the system drive itself. I'll let this process normally run because this could normally take some time, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes or even more, depending, again, it all depends on how fast your network and your storage is. So I'll let this entire process run and I'll come back to you guys once this entire snapshot is completed.
as you can see uh, that the imaging wizard has just completed successfully. I'll click done on this and I'll just show you what has happened. Uh, you can see that a snap shot has been taken of the C drive. So I see exactly a replica of that up here, uh, which is an F drive. And if you have a look at the virtual disk status, it will also state that it's active and it's uh, streamed on a port 6929. And the name of the virtual disk is virtual Windows Server 2019.vsdx. Uh, if we go back onto the previous server, uh, you can also see that uh, the VDisk is completely copied across up here. Uh, so, and if I do an F5 here, you can see that this box is in production and it's booted out from hard disk. So what we're gonna do now is uh, I'm going to shut down the uh, P, uh, the the gold image because it's already the snapshot has been successfully taken. So we'll go ahead and shut down the the disk, and I'm going to change the disk uh, to make it boot uh, from a V disk, and I'll also create a test uh, device uh, uh, from the collection and try to boot up using the existing disk that we have taken. So we'll go through that entire process. So you can see in the console that the uh, C CVAT GLD PVS uh, VM is shut down. And if I do an F5 up here, you can see that it's shut down here as well. It's not green anymore. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing up here is I'll change the production, uh, the boot from um, to VDisk. And I'll click OK onto that. And the next thing that I'm going to do up here is I'm going to create a new device. I'll just call it uh, just for the testing purpose, I'll call it CVAD, CVAD P01 and I'll make sure that it's production uh, and it's a VDisk and I'm just going to add the existing VDisk to this new box that we have just created and I'll go ahead and do an OK. But the next step is I'll right click on it and create an Active Directory machine account. Uh, so I'll go ahead and create a new account. So a machine account with that name is already successfully created in Active Directory. So I'll click close on that. So the first thing that we need to do is up here, I'll just create a new VM. Uh, just call it uh, 2019 and I'll call it the same. So it's CVAD P01 and next, keep it at as UFE boot. Uh, I I want to boot it from the network, yes. And uh, I'm just going to uh, place it on my Zen server. I'll give it VF12 DB. And I'm not going to attach any drive at this point. So what, uh, as you can see, a base VM has just got created and it's trying to start it, but I'm just going to post shut down the VM. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be copying the MAC address of this VM. Uh, and I'll go back to my PVS box because I know that that's the MAC address for it. Let's see if I can paste that there. Yeah. And I'll do an OK. Uh, the next thing is on the store itself, the disk at the moment is it's in read write. So I'm going to change that from private image, uh, single device read write to a standard image. And I'll say cache the device uh, uh, on RAM with overflow on hard disk. Yeah. And I want to give it 4096 MB. And I'll also make sure that it's asynchronized IO. Do an OK to that. I click yes. And once that's done, uh, I'll go back onto the uh, virtual server that we just created and I'll just make sure that the boot order is set to network. And the hard disk is DVD. 
Right. So as there is a as there is a write cache drive, I just need to add one more write cache drive on this box. So I'll just add a write cache drive and do that 40 GB. So that would be a D a write cache drive. I'll go ahead and start the VM and hopefully this VM should boot and pick up the new v disk which is in read only right now uh, so it's pick c booting out from my network and you can see that it has picked up the disk and it's streaming out from the disk at the moment so I'll let the entire vm boot uh, this shouldn't take that long so as you can normally see, the CVAD P01, the VM that's booting out from the VDisk has just started. And I'm just going to log on to the machine. And you can see that uh, at this point, uh, this VM is running out of the VDisk streamed over the network, uh, and there is no physical uh, disk attached to it. So once we are logged in, I'll just show you that, and you can find out from the status as well. So if I go back on my PVS01 box as well, and if I do an FI, you can see that yeah, one is booted from production. And if you have a look at uh, the store, and if I click on show usage, it will show you that CVAT P01, which is the one that we just logged on to, mm. is booted out uh, from this device. And if I go back on P01, it's logged on, and you can see that uh, it's logged on to the desktop. And if you have a look at the virtual disk right now, it's showing as active and it's in read only mode. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, next, in the next series, I will work on creating a machine catalog and a delivery group using Studio uh, through PVS. Uh, so, we will go through another session on one of those. Uh, till then, uh, Asta La Vista from Citrix Sage. I hope uh, uh, you guys like the video. Please uh, don't forget to uh, share, comment. Uh, and like the video. Thank you. Thank you very much.